We've been finding oil in the aft bilge for a couple of weeks now and haven't really been able to figure out where it's from. We've narrowed it down to the transmission now. I'll show you just a little bit down here. You can see a little bit of oily residue down in the bilge trickling through there. You can see the transmission there and the little puddle of fluid coming back and forth there. So I'm going to see if I can figure out, are we losing a seal or is the drain plug not quite tight or something else. First thing I'm gonna do is see how far down oil level is. Yeah, it doesn't even show on the dipstick. So it's pretty low. Can you hand me my phone again and I'll see if I can get a couple of pictures at the bottom of this, see if I can see a drip somewhere. Oh, it's in an uncomfortable position. I can't really find exactly like a smoking gun or anything. The whole bottom of the pan's covered with oil. But I did put a wrench on the drain plug and tighten it up just a smidgen. I don't know if it was loose enough that it was leaking or not, but it's worth a shot. I don't want to go anymore because it's a it's an aluminum case and I don't want to strip the threads and have a real problem on our hands. If it's just a little leak, we can keep topping it off. But I'm going to add oil to it and see how much is really missing. And that might give us an indication of how bad the leak is. And you can't really tell probably by the video, but everything is rocking back and forth. And it makes it really hard to even stay in one spot without holding on. Whoa. We're rolling. God. So it wasn't real low which is fantastic. So if we've got just a, a seal going out or something, but that's as fast as it's leaking, you know, we can probably just hold on by keeping it topped off every once in a while. We can live with that. Okay. So we got the fluid level topped off and the cap back on. I feel like I made this door hinge the wrong way. I was thinking that the other day too. <laughs> oh yeah. So now we gotta mop up the oily mess. There's a puddle of oil back there that I showed briefly on my phone footage. We gotta mop that up and then I'm gonna cut and put down some of these oil absorbing mats. Hopefully we'll catch the oil before it drifts down into the bilge. These are made to absorb oil uh, and not water. They sort of work, uh, better than a paper towel at any rate. So we're gonna put some of those down there and try and catch more of it than last time. Okay, here we go. While we're in here, we might as well do a few other necessary items. I'm replacing the pencil zinc in the coolant system. Got a, a heat exchanger, which works like basically like a radiator with a car, except instead of cooling the water 
through air like a radiator does in your car. It cools it by seawater passing through it. All right. And it has to be changed about once a month. Every other month maybe at the, at the longest. So it's definitely ready. So this is the last one I pulled off. And here's the new one. So you can see it gets eaten away and dissolves. And there's the new one next to it. You never want to let them get down past about a third left. That's pretty much gone. This one was still hanging in there, but they're like 30 cents a piece. And the heat exchanger is $300 plus labor. So there's no reason not to keep a fresh clean zinc in there to protect it. The problem with it is there's four or five different dissimilar metals all combined in the heat exchanger. And when you add salt water to those dissimilar metals on the galvanic scale, they create a battery, basically. They create an electrical current that travels from the most noble of the metals to the least noble. And the least noble metal is going to get eaten away as electronics leave it and go into the salt water. And so what you want to do is provide a sacrificial least noble metal on purpose that gets eaten, which in this case is this zinc. In some cases it's aluminum instead of zinc in fresh water. But you want to provide it the least noble metal, otherwise the least noble metal that makes up your part will get destroyed. This is day three, I think, of our anchorage here at Highborn Key, waiting for the weather to calm down just a bit. We're totally going stir crazy, so we're gonna go for a little walk on the beach, uh, which is just uh, like 200 yards away. So a nice little, nice little swim. Ah, oh, kidding. Kenzie won't <laughs> swim to the beach. It's too scary. We're gonna take the dinghy over to the beach. It's right across from us and it's gorgeous. Hi. Yeah, we made it to the beach. This is a really nice spot too. We're protected from the wind on the back side of the island here and the beach is gorgeous. We are gonna take a little walk and get some exercise. Even though we are pinned down by the high winds and getting just a tiny bit restless, we are loving the adventure of being on such a beautiful and remote island with so many possibilities all around us. 